Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Burn Bootcamp Podcast. It is your host, Devin, and listen, I'm excited to do a little workshop with you today. This is going to be a quick workshop. Usually workshops, you know, maybe 45 minutes to uh, two hours, somewhere in there. But I'm going to get you a 15-minute workshop today, okay? Um, so I talk about this all the time, goal setting. And when I was, you know, coming up 24 years old, trying to figure out what to do after I got released by the Giants, I'm lost. I'm in a place where I don't even know my next step. That, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do the next day even. And I know how crushing that feeling can be for you if you happen to be in that place. And I know certainly at some point in your life, you've also felt this way. And why do we feel this way? Why do we feel this void? Well, the answer is because there's nothing to look forward to. And so that's all goal setting is, is just a chance to look forward, a chance to anticipate, a chance for you to know the road ahead and, and be able to align all of your dreams in, in a structure so that you can then reverse engineer, work backwards, set goals by you know 10 years, three years, one year, and then you can break the one year down once in the quarters. Okay, so listen, this isn't mind blowing stuff. This is just stuff that you probably have heard a thousand times. It's white noise. It might be, it might be kind of in one ear and out the other for you. But for me, I know that there was a time in my life when I, as mundane as it sounds, and it is like, you know, it sounds like a broken record when people are telling you set goals, set goals, set goals, goal setting works, know the road ahead. How can you manage what you don't measure? And you hear all of these quips. It's like it becomes white noise. And what happens and what I've found and observed as I, as I travel is I see uh, people actually not setting goals at all. Uh, in fact, like most people, when we're, in a, when we're in a group setting and let's say we're at a, a gym, you know, we're often doing Q&As inside of our gyms. Uh, my team and I, we travel around, run camps, hang out with our franchise partners, work on goal setting, work on running the business, we call it the burn operating system. I meet with our members, we, we talk, we share stories. You know, I'll ask the question often in, in that type of setting, it's an honest setting, it's, a, it's a, a setting where vulnerability is accepted, it's actually encouraged. And people are willing to tell me the truth. And oftentimes I'll say like, I'll ask them the question, how, how many people in here show me, uh, could show me right now a piece of paper in which that you have a goal that you are convicted about that you read and, and repeat in your head visually and mentally and audibly every day. Almost no one, maybe one or two or three people out of a hundred. But, and, and, and I'm in a setting where, you know, if I was doing like a seminar that somebody was paying me for, I might say, I might call somebody out and say like, okay, yeah, really? Okay, tough guy, show me your goals then if you're really willing to raise your hand. Uh, but in that setting, I usually say something like, hey, Five of you have set goals that's still 2% of this whole room. Is that acceptable to you guys? No, right, obviously. So like, even in the best case scenario, I look around at a sample size of 100 people in an environment, in a community that is more ambitious, more driven, has a higher uh, a propensity, if you will, to you know, just be go-getters. Well, still, 5% five of, five of us are setting goals. Well, okay, so it must be too complex then because complexity might be the enemy of execution. I've heard somebody say that before. So I believe that if you make things too complex, then you don't, you don't have a clear path forward and clarity is power. You have no a clear path forward into exactly what you want to do. So for me, I went back and I tried to make things very, very simple. As you guys get to know me better, you'll learn that I'm no different than you. Uh, I've been able to build this amazing company, have you know thousands of employees and you know hundreds of thousands of members, locations in 41 states, open and operating. Like, it's there's been there, there have been pretty amazing like personal achievements there, and I've I've recognized that. I'm very humbled by that. I I don't want to lose that. I wake up every day hungry and priv and and, and, gra and grateful for the privilege that I have to lead people and to lead um, a movement really, and I don't take that for granted. But I do know how special and unique it is because I'm observer of the universe around us and my environment and I know not a lot of 35 year olds have been able to accomplish that um, profitable and, and scalable and you know retained 100% equity and like these are things that make the story unique. Um, and, I, and, and, I, and I know how to do goal setting because um, I, I believe that goal setting works because I started this 
all, all these statistics, all these numbers, all the things that I can say now really just started with my ability to wake up tomorrow and know the goal or know what I was going to do. And, and complexity was the enemy of execution for me. I wasn't like, I didn't just come up with this idea and I didn't just see the future and all of a sudden imagine the vision and just thought about it and manifested it really hard until it came to fruition. In fact, when I first started, if you would have told me that we had, would have 371 locations open as I sit here in this seat today and that we hit a record month last month in system-wide sales and in lives and families that we are impacting um, as a result of those sales, I would have told you you're okay. <laughs> You're crazy. You're crazy, man. You're crazy. I, I want to have five gyms in North Charlotte. That was my goal. And I still didn't even know how to do that. That was like my big, audacious, ambitious goal at the time. I didn't even know how to do that. And so if you're hearing this video and you're in a place where you are the vast majority, in my, from my perspective, about 90 plus percent of people that hear goal setting but then don't actually take it serious, like hear, you know, set your dreams forward, anticipate the future, know where you're going to go after. Like I, I, I'm a big believer in this because this is the way that I operated that you shouldn't spend 10 years figuring out what you want to do that you shouldn't spend. Like you should, you should think about what you would wake up and want to do for work every day. If you could do anything and get paid, if I could wake up every single day and do fitness and do it in motivation and, and do communication, like, and that was my career was to lead and motivate people and to teach them business and to help people get healthy and happy and create a financial future for themselves. That's enchanting for them. If I, if you like told me, if you told me that, um, I could make money doing that and feed my family and create a legacy and have the opportunity to be great at something. And I was, you know, 18, 19, 20, maybe even 22 years old. I would have been like, ah, you're crazy. Like the only people that, make money or the financial guys. The only people that make money are Wharton or Ivy League business school guys and gals. You know, oh, you gotta be, you gotta be in, in legal and in finance and sales. And I didn't wanna be in legal. I didn't wanna be in finance. I didn't wanna be in medical sales. I have my degree in personal financial planning because I wanted to be wealthy. But I also wanted, I knew that like, I watched my parents grow up, you know, uh, in a toxic, toxic and abusive relationship, beating on each other all the time, in and out of jail all the time, like f fleeing, fly by the night, never, not reliable. I saw this lifestyle and I wanted to do something that was fulfilling because they weren't fulfilled, they weren't happy. You know, they were turning to all of these drugs and this alcohol abuse and child abuse in some cases and they were doing that to escape the reality that was their everyday life and, be, and it wasn't fulfilling. So I always wanted to do something fulfilling. That was part of my reason for dreaming up the San Francisco Giants dream and the professional baseball dream and playing under the big lights. And you know, I, I thought that was possible because I had a little bit of evidence, right? So I had some, I had some goal setting experience. I had a little evidence that I was a good baseball player. I set this big goal and it didn't happen. But after that, I, that wasn't a business discipline for me. That wasn't a life discipline. That was a desperation. Uh, that was a desperation goal. That was like, just g give me something that takes me out of this lifestyle where I'm constantly in the middle of these two heavyweight boxers going at each other all the time. And I'm this little fragile kid, like, you know, on the brink of being hurt all the time. I got released. I had no idea what to do. I simplified goal setting and here's what it is. And I'm gonna walk you through this in six minutes. It's gonna be super easy and I want you to just start doing this now. This is literally how I scaled up to a $200 million annualized company. That's just this year, we're going to a billion. And how we're gonna get there is by the same exact goal setting ideology as I had way back then. It has not changed at all. It's very, very simple. Here's what I do. Every year I do this, okay? And in really every quarter, um, I'm looking at it with a real microscope and then every day I'm rehearsing it to see if I need to make tweaks. And here it is. It's 50 goals. They can be whatever goals set your heart on fire, whatever goals that you're passionate about. For me, it's always been business, helping people, being a leader, um, 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 sports. It's always been having a family. It's always been having a marriage, that one marriage that lasts a lifetime. It's been about having a house on the lake. 
It's been about going out any morning I want to on a sea dew and zipping 72 miles an hour on a high powered sea dew across my lake and hearing the, the wind just zoom by my ears so fast that I'm just in meditation. It's like super present, right? Having a sauna in my house. Like these are like, it doesn't matter how big or how small it is. Going to the moon with a company where I want to build 10,000 locations now that I have some evidence that we, that we have a small possibility and probability of doing that. But there's a possibility, there's a probability and that's the whole point. Because if you find possibilities by writing 50 things out, not 49, not 48, not 40, okay, 50 plus, you'll find possibilities if you force yourself to put on paper what you really want. And it's okay that it's material because that's just the objective nature to some subjective thing that you really want. Yeah, do I want to buy a baseball team someday because I love sports? Do I want to buy, wouldn't it be nice to buy the San Francisco Giants? Hell yeah. How cool of a story would that be? How cool of a legacy would that be to get released and have no idea what you want and then end up uh, figuring you might as well just set a goal to buy the team someday and then actually doing that. Right? So if it's some pie in the sky dream that has a little small, you know, you know, you know, little light at the end of the tunnel type chance to go get it done, put that down and then put the thing that, you know, most people would think you're material or think you're vain for and put all of these things down, okay? Here's all you're going to do with this list. This is it. This will give you a head start, okay? Not only a head start on your goals, but this will give you a head start in life. I'm telling you, it is it is it is objective evidence for me, you guys, I'm telling you, nobody does this. This is all it takes for you to open up your life. This is all it takes for you to do exactly what I've done is this goal setting, okay? Do your 50. Next to each one, 50 or more. Everything that you want in your heart. And hey, it's you can do it tomorrow too. Add to it tomorrow. You're gonna put one of four numbers. You're gonna put a 10, you're gonna put a five, you're gonna put a three, you're gonna put a one. This is a 10 year goal, something that might take you 10 years to accomplish. This is a five year goal. It might take around five years to accomplish. This is a three year goal. Uh, it's a short term, shorter term, mid term goal. This, I can see this happening. I got some real evidence in my life right now that this might come to fruition. Um, and a one year goal or less. It could be a goal that you have set out to just work out tomorrow. That could be one year or less. And now I want you to write a 10, a five, a three, and a one next to all of these different goals. And then what I want you to do is take a tally. So somewhere off in your paper, so wherever you take notes, you're gonna just go write a little 10, five, three, one, and a dash in, each, in front of each one of them and tally up all 50 goals. How many of them are 10 year goals? How many of them are five, three, and one? And then here's where you start to identify. Here's where you start the process of self-awareness. I would look at my list and I would say, man, Devin, you've got a lot of one year goals, man. You're a short term thinker right now. Hey, you. You say you want to go do these things like, uh, you know, maybe you have one 10 year goal. At the time when I was first going through this was five gyms in North Charlotte called Burn Boot Camp. And it was actually the tagline, Charlotte's Fit Community of Moms. I knew exactly who I wanted to speak to. And that was my big pie in the sky 10 year goal at the time was open five gyms in North Charlotte. Okay, have my own house was my one year goal. I wanted to be a homeowner. Right? Why? Because my parents never owned their own home. Not one time in their entire life did they own their own home. Okay? The banks always own their home. And so for me, I was really important. Um, a three year goal was to have one gym open, right? To be self sufficient, to have my debt paid off, my student debt paid off. I got a scholarship to play ball at Central Michigan, but they don't necessarily give 100% scholarships in that sport. I had a high 60s, low 70s ride throughout my career. They paid for that much, but I took out the rest, right? I couldn't work. I was playing baseball full time, going to school full time. Um, and you know, so I had, this was my list. I still have this list today. It's in a purple notebook and I have all of my original philosophies, original theories and concepts of how I got started in that purple notebook, okay? And then from there, all you're gonna do is take your one year goals and start putting those one year goals on your schedule wherever you think you could start to accomplish them. Don't make a to-do list, make an outcome list. Make a, hey, on this day, I will have this thing done. On this day, I will have this thing done. And if you're bold enough, if you're far along enough, if you're advanced enough, if you're achieving enough, then you can go to three and five and 10 year goals. And at this point, when I do this exercise, 
I've got about 152 goals. Um, and sometimes uh, I'll add to it. Sometimes I'll take away from it. And it, it's really even throughout 10, 5, 3, and 1. And I want to be a really even thinker. Okay, and what this allows me to do is, hey, see far out in the future so I know where I'm going and I know where I'm headed, but also be able to stay in the sand, right? See the grains today, get granular. So it's stars and sand and then everything in between. You want to make sure that, you know, these things are outcomes that are on your calendar. They're not to-do lists that go on your to-do list tomorrow. They are scheduled events that go out on your calendar. And when you do it this way, at least what I've found, when I've done it this way, is I start to attract the things in my life that are gonna help me reach that goal. A, because I don't wanna let the people I love around me down, and, and B, because I don't wanna let myself down. But I'm always framing my entire outcome list, okay, this whole exercise, I'm always framing it in how I'm gonna make my wife Morgan proud. She's my person. If I'm gonna get myself motivated enough to go out and tackle these really audacious, really hardcore goals, I've got to look at I've got to look at those goals through the lens of Morgan's eyes. I've then got to look at it through my children's eyes. Then I've got to look at it through my team's eyes, my employees, my 100 people um, here on the East Coast and the other 200 on the West Coast that we have that staff the, uh, the 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 HQ of our organization for thousands more employees and hundreds more of our franchise partners. I'm thinking about how to make them proud through my goal list, right? And through um, my unbiased goal setting with the with the filter of not what I think I can accomplish, but what I really want. Right? That's very important. I don't look at this whole project through what I think I can accomplish. I look at this entire project through the lens of what do I really want? If there was no limitations, no consequences, and nothing holding me back, what exactly would I do? What would I go for? What could I achieve? And that's it. That's it. But you've got to take action. Don't be the person that knows it but doesn't execute it. You think knowledge is power, you're wrong. Knowledge is not power. I used to think so too. Knowledge is potential power and only powerful if you execute. Go execute. Two claps on two. One, two.